So that's my Koga Signature World Traveller. So World Traveller KSTR26 Aluminium 705 tubing. Solid as an ox. It's like a real workhorse. It's pretty heavy, it's about 20 kilos. But the thing is, if you want a bike that you can ride around the world or the next 365 days wherever you're going and pretty well do no maintenance, this is the bike. It's not that cheap because I've got the carbon fibre belt drive, I've got the roll off hub, I've got the hydraulic brakes, side pull hydraulic, I've got the Magura HS33 side pull hydraulic which have been perfect. I've had to adjust them just a little bit as the brake pads have worn but well, pretty well no maintenance on them whatsoever which for brakes, I don't know, other brakes in the past they slip, they yeah, cable snap etc but nothing's gone wrong with these whatsoever in the mud, yeah they're filled up with mud and that they continue to work they don't work as good in the wet obviously they do, well they, they pull you up but they just don't work as well as in the dry but yeah solid, strong and reliable definitely another good feature and they're five years leak proof guaranteed and they haven't leaked a drop of oil yet and having the hydraulic does make them a lot easier when you've got a load and you've got to do pulling up quickly the Rollhoff 14 speed speed hub 514 has leaked a little bit of oil at times I guess it's just natural seepage I presume when I was out in the desert or the real hot when it was about 40 degrees and stuff and I did have a full load so there was a lot of pressure on it it did seek out a bit and it still does a tiny bit of occasions these days but as long as you pull the wheel off I guess every month or two and give it a clean it's alright 14 speed shifter has worn out as you can see it's worn through to the metal which is understandable I've done a heck of a lot of shifting and it's 14 speed so yeah it's good but yeah well that has worn out as you can see but it's still working and I don't intend to replace it yet so all good and the gates carbon fibre belt drive the centre track has been excellent I had the old CDX before this one and I changed it over and I didn't like the old one I have to say but the center track absolutely brilliant doesn't hold any dirt mud sand whatsoever and I'm up to 14,000 kilometers and well I haven't had to haul it once because you don't oil them and that is great so it means you don't get oil on everything you don't have to carry oil for it and yeah really good carbon fiber belt skate center track highly recommend With a carbon fibre belt drive, your frame has to come apart. So you can't just put it on any bike, and that's what that's for. The frame actually comes apart. The only thing that's gone wrong with the belt drive is that little nick there. Gates, carbon fibre belt drive, centre track. Highly recommend it. No oiling, which is not only not a hassle, it just means you don't get oil on everything, which is really good. It really is. It's at the moment it's got a 50 front pulley and a 20 back tooth one, which I'm going to change it to a 46 front, but it just means I've got to keep under 100 kilos because it's a little bit hasn't got the lowest enough gears on some of the real steep hills I've found, just for myself. 90% of the time, 95% of the time it'd be all good. But just on some of the real steep hills, I've found it a little bit hasn't got the gears. Rook seat, B17. <laughs> Love it again. Best seat I've ever had. Comfortable. Though you do need cycling sh pants with chamois in. Otherwise, it, mm, you may, legs may rub a little bit. But yeah, for long distance touring, absolutely great. And it hasn't worn hardly at all. Tiny bit of wear, but 14,000 kilometres, what can you expect? Now looking at the trekking handlebars or butterfly bars that come with the Koga Signature, absolutely love them. The first set I've ever had, but I find riding on the highways, I'm generally on the low precision here sort of thing, 
and then on some of the steeper hills I adjust to the top bit to give me a bit more upright riding position and just sometimes even on the flat just changing hand position often or well, gives you back a bit of a rest etc etc which is pretty good the only thing that's gone wrong with these at all is that little bit of wear and tear but that's after 14,000 kilometers which isn't bad the lever with the foam insert is quite comfortable very impressed definitely worth getting your set of trekking handlebars if you're going to do some long distance bicycle touring the head stem I've had no particular problem with it whatsoever though I have heard in some forums and that people complain it's gone wrong a bit but for me absolutely nothing's gone wrong with it the Schmidt the Dulux I'm not sure how you pronounce that exactly they've been a great light they pretty much light up a good section of the road in a rectangular area which um, plenty easy enough to see riding along if you go super slow down to about five kilometers an hour yeah they don't light up and they also have a good they stay on afterwards once you stop for about a minute so if you need to sort of do anything to get things ready get things off they continue to stay on so another really good light highly recommend them not cheap once again but sometimes you got to pay for quality the 4d top light been really good once again gets powered by the generator and it also has a battery inside yeah I don't know actually how it broke really I came out one day and I think someone must have reversed into it or done something but it wasn't broken by me that's for sure anyway it's a good light I've just done a bit of self-repair there as you can see it did originally come with a lock that went round the wheel attached sort of somewhere here but when I went through the Flinders Ranges and there was lots of mud it just clogged up so much so I just disassembled that pretty quickly and threw that away and it was weighed anyway for no real reason the lighting attaches to the mud guards and just follows inside the mud guards and the mud guards have been really good too no complaints whatsoever and they do keep you dry when it's wet or it's muddy and I don't really like having mud flick all over me or dirt because it does get you dirty it's dirty enough out in the road without getting tripled and out of dirt when you're going through mud and I've gone through a lot of mud at times so the mud guards are really good once again and the lighting system goes internal in the frame and then reappears up at the top part here and comes out which is also good I did change the pedals to flat pedals instead of the standard ones that came with it because I like flat pedals just easier for me the way I ride long touring anyway and the Koga signature, they even put your name on it if you want. So CO2 friendly. That's me traveling, trying to produce as few emissions as possible and be totally off the grid when I travel. Now that's one tough tire brand. Schwabel? I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce it, to tell you the truth. But the Mondeo 50mm, these ones, great tires. 14,000 kilometers one puncher and as you can see the front tire still got a fair bit of tread on it highly recommend them not that expensive really they've got a blue bead inside them which stops stuff from penetrating and it really does work and these are good for off-road they've got a bit of tread for the off-road and they're still quite fine on the road 26 by 200 and you can inflate them from 35 to 70 psi which is pretty good. I have had them down to 35 psi when I've been on really rough roads and then again generally on the highway put them up to 70 psi. The Sun 28 6 volt 3 watt great dynamo hub hasn't leaked hasn't had water in and it still produces good clean energy for powering my lights and the e-work which I power the phone which I'm filming is drink bottle holders it comes with four places that you can screw in different ones one on the bottom one up the side here towards the front one directly up there and there's one just under directly underneath the frame which you quite can't see there. the stand at the back as you can see the bolts have come loose and they've fallen out uh, I should have used thread lock I guess but yeah in the future I've got to use thread lock because they do come loose after well after about a week or so on the road and the very very bottom of it had a plastic rubber sort of thing which just well 
fell apart in the first week, but that's okay. The front stand, it had a spring on it. Yeah, I guess that lasted about three months before that fell apart, but that's okay. I've got just um, some elastic bits that I sort of just put it up underneath to attach it, which is okay, it still works, so it's all good. The Tubus low rider racks have been really good. Strong once again, really reliable, nothing's gone wrong. You can see a tiny bit of rust, surface rust there, but that's okay. Still strong, nothing's gone wrong with them, really good, highly recommend. And it's a good place at the front there to mount your GoPro. The back rack, once again, really good, nothing's gone wrong with it whatsoever. Really strong, reliable. Tiny little bit of bend in the frame up here, but yeah, nothing's gone wrong with it. Highly recommend them once again. Really good racks, really strong and long lasting. And I've put a lot of weight on them at times, I must say. Even if you don't get one of these, a lot of the components are a good idea to have a look at so you know what to sort of look for. Strong, reliable, tough working components that you can depend on.